Auto interviewer can perform autonomous interviews. Let's interview for a rocket scientist position. Set the level as a beginner. You can set how many questions, let's say three, and our name. During the interview process, an evaluator evaluates the responses in real time as the interview is progressing. And based on the candidate's name, creates a table and writes each round of question and answer pairs along with the evaluation to a database. For example, Echo interviewed for a beginner level product manager and then for a barista medium level and Jenny interviewed for advanced senior Python dev. Let's go ahead and answer this question. I love space and fast things. So it's going to continue the questionnaire, but we are already getting uh, evaluation at the same time. You can see that first question and answer has been written to database and we are waiting on evaluation and the evaluation just became available. So scan this instruction while enthusiastic looks detail and we got an overall score of four so far. This is the scorecard for general situations. And this is the scorecard for coding related interviews. This Python program features some new stuff that I've been using, which I find very exciting, such as the observer pattern, the queue system, and threading for asynchronous programming and running of the interviewer and the evaluator. And they both write to the same SQLite database. The observer pattern I've heard in object-oriented programming, I've been meaning to try it for a while. So we define an observable class which the interviewer inherits from and through which we notify and set the question-answer pairs to a queue and evaluator in a separate thread simultaneously processes these evaluations and writes them to database while the interviewer interview is ongoing and the interviewer writes the question answers to a database as well. Code files for this, along with a very detailed code review, will be available at Patreon. Link is in the description. Let's take a look at the observable.py. This is a class that is a register observer pattern method, which actually takes in the, which will take in the evaluator and register it as an observer. And the notify observer is going to put some data into our queue system, which is standard library in Python, and process notifications in an infinite loop will retrieve data from this and actually notif use the notify method of the observer, in this case, the evaluator, and let it process this data. Interviewer inherits from this observable so that it can perform the notification process and notify the evaluator every time the candidate answers a question. We initialize our script and bring everything together in, the, in our main loop, in the main.py file. The question we are taking in while we are interviewing for a level, how many questions, and name of the candidate. Then we are initializing our ChatGPT client, which I'll talk about here in a moment. We get the interview category metrics by making a call to GPT to find out if it is code related or non code related general interview. And then we initialize our interviewer class as conduct start conducting the interview. For this, I'm using the GPT chat client class I have created, which really makes it convenient to perform all sorts of GPT call operations, which you normally have to write yourself, such as model selection, max history, which, which trims the history to a certain amount of words, max word per message. This is like max token, but it's a soft limit rather than a hard coded max tokens. Set the use JSON mode or not, or set streaming true or false. Code files for this along with a very detailed exclusive code review video is available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. So in essence, this uh, class has an add message, clear history, get response, and uh, ask questions, trim history uh, methods, which we, I am using to perform uh, functions with GPT calling in the auto interviewer. So in our main uh, file, when we start to conduct interview, the interview class uh, inherits from the observable class, which so you can use its methods, such as the notify observers or process notifications. We take in interviewing for level, how many questions and all the category for which interview metrics to use. If we have the coding interview metrics and general interview metrics, feel free to modify these. And then we initialize our evaluator with that particular category so that it can pick whichever interview metrics to instantiate its system message. We call the register observer and set evaluator to it because evaluator is going to be observing our interview process. Remember, uh, regist register observer is a method from observable, but since we have inherited in the interviewer by passing it here, then we have access to its methods so we can use it to set an observer, in this case, an evaluator. We initialize our GPT client using the chat GPT client class from the GPT call class.py. And we call the setup interview 
method, which sets the system message for our interviewer and adds the message to its message history. After that, we connect to our database and set the table name with the get table method, get table name, which is configured by the name of the candidate. And then we execute a SQLite query to initialize our table with the necessary columns. And we also have add the database method, which we call during the conduct interview. So we set our question number, we add the system message with the name of the candidate and we get a response. So uh, since we now know the candidate's name, this triggers a GPT response, which is introductory and usually contains the first question. Then we enter a loop, which is going to continue for how many questions. And we take in a user input and this concludes the first question and an answering round. So then we add to our database and then we notify the observer. We call the notify observer method from the observer class, observable class which is just going to put that data, which is the dictionary, into our queue. And the process notification with an infinite loop continually notify the observer of this until we are at the end of the interview and our queue is empty. Uh, the process notifications get, get starts running when the observable class is first initialized when inherited by the interviewer class. And we are using threading so that the interviewer and the evaluator can run on their separate threads. So Essentially, when the interviewer is conducting the interview, after each question and answer pairs, the observables notify observer method will put those into the queue, and the infinite loop process notification will actually continually run the evaluator and get evaluation, and both the question and answer and evaluations are written to database from two separate threads. So an important thing I noticed, if you look at evaluator, that you can actually, you cannot actually perform, well, it's not advisable to perform operation on the same database within two separate threads so it's a better idea to actually initialize our lock which is an option method from threading so you initialize your lock with threading.lock you can connect your database without the lock but when you're performing a database operations we just do it with the self.lock so that's the only difference so when so when our separate threads are performing operations on the database they don't interfere with one another and when the notify observers is called from the interviewer after adding it to the database within our for loop, we send this dictionary. This could have been any information, but this is what is being added to our queue. And then we perform a check to make sure uh, to, to find out if we're at the end of the interview, we enter, enter a system message so that GPT will actually conclude the interview. Other than that, we add that uh, we add user response as a user message and then get a new response. This will initiate the second round. And this loop will take in a user answer. And then once we have the question and answer, we'll add to our database, notify observers, and add that message back to our history. When we notify the observer, we have set up with the, we have already set up the evaluation using the interview metrics, whether it's a coding or general interview metrics. Then the notification method of the evaluator will connect to the database, send the question and the answer to GPT and get a response. And write that as a score, write that as a YAML to the scorecard.yaml file, just so we can actually keep track of the process one by one. But we're going to write it to our database as well. Right after the writing to the file with uh, with a lock, we actually add the information to our database, and that's it. So this pattern is very useful. I am actually using a similar pattern in my auto streamer as well. Some of you may know I created the auto streamer, which creates automatically creates content, live streams, and build course website. You can actually watch the live stream here. But this uses threading as well and a queue system, which actually is really useful on building very, very complex agent-like systems which perform tasks in parallel. So I want to explore more agent tasks, agent systems using this type of methodology. The requirements for this is pretty light, just term color and open AI. Files will be available at Patreon along with a very detailed walkthrough, exclusive video. You can download the files, it's attached to the post. And you're with my Patreon, take a look at the collections. If you do become a patron, you'll have access to 200 plus project files. But I'm gearing up to making more exclusive videos. I have six currently. And there'll be many more and you'll have access to each one of these as well. For example, full stack web apps, database and embeddings walkthroughs, and really interesting projects which uh, you might use yourself or find some great ideas from. And if you're enjoying my content, so take a look at my website, Echo Hive AI Academy. Echohive.live. You can quickly browse through all my projects, search for the projects you're looking for, for example, FitFast API. And then if you're interested and if you're if you want to become a patron to download the code, you can just click here and it'll take you to the 
post where you can just read about it, find all the links, and find the code download right here. I'll finish this by showing you something I've learned. You see here in the main loop, we're, uh, in the main file, we're taking input. But when building a, a system, right, and I'm, uh, while I was testing it, I got kind of tired of continually entering the input for each one of these four uh, questionnaires, like what I'm interviewing for level. So actually, if you put an empty string and use the or separator, if you actually enter something here like Python, then it won't ask you for this and it will just skip to the next one. So this is a nice quick way of actually quickly testing your stuff and also taking user input when this string is empty. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of this and I'll see you in the next video.